my fellow gardeners. It is a cool and windy day here in Oklahoma, but I wanted to take just a few minutes um, to share just a few tips that I've learned over the past few years. I do consider myself a beginner gardener because I've only been doing this for a few years or so, but there are a few things that I've learned along the way that if I would have known a couple years ago, um, it would have been kind of helpful. So I hope this helps you out some. This is the time of year that we're really excited and we want to get our pots planted. Um, I've actually been to the nursery and have had several different annuals in my basket ready to purchase and decided, you know what, I just have to wait two or three more weeks and then I can safely plant these because we still have the threat of frost out here in Oklahoma. So one thing that you can do, and this is my number one tip, is you can plant perennials in your pots. Um, they still have pansies and violas and so forth, but having a, a perennial in the center of your pot is a really good idea. You can even use shrubs for the center of your pot. So I've, a couple of nurseries that I've been to lately have had, um, you know, they carry over a lot of their perennials in the greenhouses and so they have like salvia that's blooming. I saw some shasta daisies that were blooming. Um, Oh my goodness, the dianthus right now is, is blooming. So there are um, several perennials that you can get right now and they'll make for a really good centerpiece in your pots for the next two or three weeks. And then you can go ahead and plant them in your bed um, when you're wanting to get kind of the warmer um, annuals. Now in saying that, I did actually purchase two petunias that I'm going to go ahead and put in this pot and only this pot because I will cover it. But this pot I've always put black petunias in for the past couple years and so I did purchase those and we'll see how it goes. I'm just gonna, if it, we have the thread of frost, I'm gonna put a, a blanket over these. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and start planting that pot up. So I know this doesn't necessarily scream like spring, uh, it more or less kind of screams bumblebee uh, here, but I still think it's super pretty. Um, still have some nice flowers as Easter's coming up and so forth. Um, this right here is an evergreen um, hedge grass. Uh, this likes um really part sun but this will get to be about two feet tall and i'm going to just transplant that into my garden here in about three weeks after the april 15th um it's kind of like our deadline out here in oklahoma um, for the freezes so let's plant this in the middle i have your sweet alyssum here which i love sweet alyssum this will just continue to grow and flower all the way through um, till frost really um, and this right here they, there's several different kinds of sweet alyssum this is the snow princess um, this gets to be about 10 to 16 inches kind of high and then it'll just spill down to be about two about two feet the sweet alyssum it can handle the 30 degree weather pretty well um, so this is something that's pretty good out here in, in zone 7 to go ahead and plant now. Now, I did plant my black petunias that I, just again, I love these so much and I'm hoping I only got two. Um, but if it does possibly freeze, which it may freeze uh, Monday or Tuesday night, um, I will put a blanket on these. Um, but I'm going to keep these in these in this pot. The sweet alyssum here, I'm going to transplant elsewhere. These right here are Bidens. These are the Goldilocks Rock Bidens. These are all these are full sun. All of these plants here, uh, the, around here, these are full sun plants. Um, I normally have these in my pots through the summer, 
Um, so I, more than likely, because I don't want this to kind of be a bumblebee pot, um, I will transplant these out um, as well. But these get to be about 12 inches high. Again, they like full sun. These do do well in the gardens too, but they do kind of trail over. They do really super well in the pots. So, but I'm pretty happy with this for right now. Um, I'm going to give you an example here of another pot that I did earlier. So this is a good time to, you know, to go to the nursery and look and see, you know, what type of perennial or, you know, grass um, that can really, you can put in the center of your pot and it's kind of like your statement piece. They have a lot of perennials out there, again, like I said earlier, that are, that are blooming. I was at uh, my local nursery out here and they had the double play candy corn spirea. Um, you know, they're right now about this big and round, but they're beautiful. I mean, it'd be perfect for Easter. They're kind of yellow, orange, and pinkish. That would be a really pretty statement piece, centerpiece in a pot right now. Um, didn't get one, uh, but maybe, maybe I will. You never know. So in the center of this pot, I planted a blue butterfly delphinium. I've never planted this before but I think it's super pretty. It is a perennial. Um, it likes sun to part sun. It grows only to be about 12 to 18 inches. And from what I've read, it's pretty good um, to plant on the border of your flower bed. It blooms from early to late summer. And so I think this will be really fun to have in this pot here for a few weeks, you know, two, three weeks, maybe more. And then I'll go ahead and I'll plant it out into one of my garden beds. Um, I also have in here the euphorbia, the diamond snow euphorbia, which I've planted this several times before in the landscape and in pots, and it just blooms, gets larger throughout the whole summer, and does well all the way until fall. Um, I just love that kind of glimmer of white that it gives your pots in your landscape. Um, paired with that, I have the lemon coral sedum of which again, I've planted quite a bit in pots and in landscape, and it just does so well in this heat that we get and humidity here in Oklahoma. Um, it's this full to part sun. Again, this goes all the way through summer. It has more of a trailing habit. Um, this is just, again, lemon coral sedum from Proven Winners. Um, just an awesome plant. And as you can tell, I definitely need to get a couple more <laughs> plants in here. Um, but all in all, I won't really have to worry about this pot as it gets into the lower 30s and freezing because the lemon coral sedum and the, and the euphorbia will do pretty well and of course the perennial will as well. But, uh, so that is my, my first tip. I'm gonna go inside for my second tip. So my second tip is to build a spreadsheet. I started my spreadsheet a couple years ago. I really just started really kind of inputting into it really last summer, but it's been very helpful um, so far this spring. Um, I have on here, my husband's gonna put a kind of a closer up picture of it, but I have my different beds in there. I have the different perennials that I have in my beds. Um, and it shows, um, when to fertilize them, how tall they get, um, if they like full or part sun, uh, when to prune them, um, if it blooms on new wood or old wood. But so fertilizing season for me, which I did here a few weeks back, it was so nice to be able to come onto the spreadsheet and look and see, okay, my hydrangeas, I know I need to fertilize them in early spring and they like a granular rose fertilizer. So instead of me getting on my phone and doing the research, you know, I had it all right here. Um, my nine barks, um, you know, nine barks don't necessarily really like to be pruned. Um, you can, but they don't have to be. So I've got a bunch of inform, you know, information. Mulch is good for the winter time. And then you can fertilize or compost once in the spring um, with a good tree and shrub fertilizer. So I've kind of gone down here through my rows of Sharon's, from my cone flowers. Um, all of my different perennials now I have in here. So um, it's just been very helpful for me. So I think this is kind of a good tip and it's not like you've got to do all of them all at one time. This is an ongoing thing for me. Um, 
I also have in here different annuals that have done really well in the beds and different annuals that haven't done so good. So again, it's just kind of a, a reminder um, that doesn't take too much time, but um, will save you time in the long run. Um, I really appreciated it so far this, uh, this season. So my third tip is to create some type of notebook and I'm kind of embarrassed to show you guys this because it's very dirty and it's kind of messy, but hey, it works for me. But this kind of just goes through all of the different plants that I've purchased and then I've kind of put out here just little notes, um, you know, where I liked it, um, I didn't do well, did do well, um, but again, this is kind of nice to have, but I've just taped just taped all of these on here and I've gone I go back to this actually quite a bit um, from the dianthus you know like this is a really good uh, an example these pink pinheads this is actually a perennial um, and it spreads and it does really well in rocks and this comes back this is it's actually already coming back but it came back last year and it's coming back again this year um, so I, it's just nice to have that in there because, you know, I, I forget. I, I'm one who I, I see a pretty flower and I'll just pick them up, um, especially being a, beginning, a beginner gardener. Um, so it's nice to keep these and then have the notes to go back in and look at them. So I definitely suggest keeping a notebook of your different flowers you've purchased. Okay, my fourth tip is to take notes on your phone. Everybody has a little notes app on your phone and I'm sure you guys are like me if you're watching my video, um, that you watch a lot of other garden videos and I have really gotten so much information um, from other garden um, YouTubers like Garden Answer, she's amazing, Garden by Creekside. Um, I watch them daily, but they've given me such good tips and suggestions for flowers that I'd like um, to try. So I have my word. I probably have 30 or 40 different um, different kind of plants in here that have you know little comments like Queen Tut likes wet and Sweet Alinsum likes wet. Uh, Double Delight Primrose Begonia would be really good for a hanging basket. So as you're um, you know, watching the videos, just take, take a couple notes. So then, you know, you have your phone most likely when you go to the nursery, so you can just kind of pull it out and have a little bit of a reminder of something that you may want to try. I have done this several, several times. It's been, um, pretty handy. My fifth and final tip is going on to the Proven Winners website. Um, I love Proven Winners, they've been so helpful. They've got videos and so forth out on YouTube too, and I love all of their flowers. But it's been really helpful for me to be able to go on their website because you can, you can put in different parameters for gardens like you know sun, um, part sun, so forth, but you can put in parameters of what type of flowers that you're looking for and it will then create you a list of different flowers that will do really well in your flower bed. And um, not only will it give you the list, but it gives you everything that you would ever need to know about the flower. Um, the, the height, uh, the kind of soil that it likes, um, how much watering does it need. It actually will even give you like companion flowers that will go well with it. Um, but it has been, I get on their site truly probably at least three times a week every saturday morning for sure um and but that's been a really really helpful um tool for me as i've um you know started gardening gardening this is my i'm going into my fourth year and i love it i'm obsessed um and i'm just really really glad that i get to kind of share this all with you guys so um i'm hoping that the tips uh are a little bit helpful if so please give me a comment uh, it is Sunday here, so going into a new week, so I hope you guys have a great week ahead. Thanks so much for joining along. Mm -hmm.